Hello everybody and welcome back and today I have a ship review for all of you and it's this tier 6 premium French battleship the Dunkirk and while she is an absolutely gorgeous ship she is beautiful as you'll see when I'm doing this on deck walkthrough she is sadly a sore disappointment in game and I tried really hard to like this ship I even held off on this review to go and play a few more battles to see if any of my opinions would change and unfortunately they haven't so if you want the short version of the review I would say save your money and do not buy the ship unless of course you happen to fall under the uh, category of ship collector or you just really like French things in which case knock yourself out still there will be a full review I uh, will talk about the ship in port I'll talk about her skills modules um, and everything else associated with the ship and then I'll take her into battle and I will show you how she performs in game all right so without much further hesitation let's get this review started and let's see how this French battleship compares all right so before I start the video I'm still going to say that, that I'm gonna have to put this disclaimer that things can still change from now until release there is still chance that something changes and if it does I will update either the video completely and make a new one or I will put additional annotations to this video to um, adjust things however from everything I've heard so far changes are not very likely so you know take that for what it's worth so let's take a look at the actual ship and I'll tell you everything that I had issues with this particular ship first up let's talk about her survivability while her HP pool is lower than a lot of the other tier 6 battleships it's at least within that range so that's okay however her armor this ship's armor is is paper it, it, this ship just has what I have to say is paper armor um, and that does not help her at all she gets if, especially when you get up to tier 7 or 8 battles which you will definitely see in the ship you will get penned by battleships everywhere and the thing is you're not a cruiser you're not agile like a cruiser um, yes you're reasonably fast but you're also not small you're a pretty big ship so things will be able to hit you and when they hit you they will pen I've run into turpitzes which don't have the best penetration and things like that and I've had turpitzes just go wow that ship is really 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 easy to pen and so that's one of the first problems with the ship she is incredibly fragile um, and her armor just doesn't really seem to do anything so you get punished by hits everywhere and so that's the first problem her torpedo protection is also not super great at only 25 percent so that's nothing to write home about so that's problems with her survivability her main guns most people look at her main guns and go wow okay you have all eight guns in the front the ship must be really good in terms of firepower um not really uh yes it's nice to have all the guns in the front because you don't ever have to worry about bringing the rear turret into action you can just sort of point your ballot stuff and always have all of your guns on target that's nice but my biggest problem with these guns is they were just inconsistent as hell I never could get these guns to behave in a somewhat consistent manner. Even the Scharnhorst guns, which are a little bit off sometimes, um, even I can get those guns to behave. These ones, I just cannot get them to behave. At longer ranges, even though if you look at the dispersion number, 244 meters out to 18.2, looks okay. But somehow you just take it into battle and the shell dispersion is just insane at long range. Um, you'd be lucky to hit maybe two to three shells, maybe, uh, per salvo at longer ranges. At close range, they're a little bit better in terms of their dispersion. But then I had another problem, which is at close range, damage just seems completely random. Sometimes you pen for good damage, sometimes you bounce, and then you don't do a lot of damage. And it's just there's nothing about these guns that I found consistent. And one of my biggest problems is if guns are not consistent at all, no matter what you do with them, that becomes an issue. Her reload time, 28 seconds. 
is nothing good either. Uh, comparatively speaking, yes, it's faster than the New Mexico. Yes, it's faster than the Warspite. Spike. But if you compare it to something like a Fuso, which is also 28 seconds, then that rate of fire advantage disappears as well. So in terms of her damage per minute, nothing great there either. Her AP shell damage of 9,700 is also really low compared to the other ships. If you look at the War Spite, her AP damage is 11,400. New Mexico's, yes, a little bit lower, but 10,500. Fuso, take a look, 10,200 lower, but don't forget New Mexico and Fuso both output four additional shells more than the Dunkirk. So her damage is just not very good. Her velocity is okay, so her arcs are all right, but that's about it, and her guns for me were massively disappointing. You could say fire HE um, and try to harass stuff, but again, your reload time is 28 seconds. That's not a lot of, that's not really all that great, and it's just like, there's just so many issues with the ship's main guns. So then you say, okay, if the main guns are kind of problematic, what about her secondary guns? Maybe her secondary guns are really good. And you look at them and you go, okay, they're 130 millimeter guns. There's these dual turrets here, and there are these really nice looking quad turrets at the back. Okay, maybe her secondary guns are okay. Then you look at her stats. All right, max HE shell damage, 1900. That's pretty good. And look, five kilometer range. All right, so maybe she can make it up with her secondary guns. No, she can't. And again, the reason why she can't is because in order for her secondary guns to actually start engaging stuff, you pretty much have to be at like this kind of angle before the rear guns will even turn around and start engaging. It's like 40 degree roughly, 40, 45 degree angle, I think roughly before the rear guns will start engaging. So your secondary guns are just, they're inactive most of the time. And so you have this problem where if you're trying to get your secondary guns into action, you have to almost stop angling your ship and give easy shots to the enemy. Another issue with the ship. Main battery firing range, 18.2 kilometers. Okay, fine. The firing range is decent, but like I mentioned earlier, the dispersion is so erratic at long range that you never really get to use that range properly. So then, of course, you go, maybe we should close the range. But remember that armor problem I mentioned earlier? The ship is just not great. One other thing about the main guns, and it's a, pro it's a problem that... I've run into a few times. Her main guns seem incredibly fragile, as in they constantly get knocked out, they constantly get disabled. It's like you take a shot off the, the guns and, all right, you've lost now 50% of your firepower because the way that Wargaming has modeled these turrets is they've modeled them as sort of um, four guns per one turret and the whole turret is modeled as one. While well, in actual practice, they actually had uh, a sort of division in the middle, a bulkhead in the middle to divide the two sets of guns so that one hit won't knock out both guns. But Wargaming haven't done that. And so if you lose a turret, you lose 50% of your firepower. And if you lose 50% of your firepower, uh, good luck with that. Uh, this ship really, really becomes quite terrible. Um, I've talked to the dev about this as well. I mentioned this. I'm like, this, these guns are, you know, terrible in terms of the survivability and, and all that. And they said, okay, at most, if we decide to change it, we might add a bit more turret health. So if that happens, I will let you guys know. But again, no, no guarantees there. Um, they're obviously going to have to look at performance data and everything before they decide. But I just found the guns to be very, very erratic, very, very inconsistent, and also found the guns durability to be quite atrocious. So, main guns, secondary guns, all kind of meh. All right, what about AA? Maybe she can cover a group of ships with her AA umbrella. Nope. Uh, she's got 1.2 kilometer, 40 DPS uh, machine guns. 1.2 kilometers, that's like nothing. She's got these 37 millimeter um, cannons. Okay, so she's got a couple of these. They do 12 DPS out to three kilometers. Again, nothing all that great. Um, and comparatively speaking, if you look at something like the New Mexico, where it's got 40 millimeter Bofors, I mean, the New Mexico has significantly more and they go out to a bit further range as well. All right, so then you go, maybe the 130 millimeter guns, you know, there's so many of the secondaries, maybe they're gonna be good for AA. 
Answer, not really. 37 average damage out of 5.2 kilometers. The Dunkirk's A is, well, just not that good. Yes, you'll see some benefits from having advanced firing training. Yes, you'll see some benefits from basic firing training. But it's nothing substantial. What about maneuverability? Yes, she's finally got something good. She's fast. 29.5 knots. So at tier 6 battles, maybe lower, 29.5 knots is a good amount of speed on a battleship because you're going to be running into slower things. However, once you get up to, let's say, tier 8, think about Amagis. They will even outrun you. You think about North Carolina, they're only 2 knots slower than you. So then you have a situation, or oh, think about a Tirpitz, that goes 30 knots as well. Well, 30 plus knots, actually, it's faster than you as well. So you have this problem where your speed advantage, which exists at the lower tiers, once you get it to tier 8, doesn't exist anymore. So your whole idea about maybe avoiding battleships to fight cruisers, to maybe avoid the big guns, well, you can't really, because if they see you, they can chase you down, and you can't get away from them. Speed is good, but... Again, nothing to make her stand out, especially for the kinds of battles she'll run into. Turning circle radius, 730 meters. Well, how does that compare? Take a look at the War Spite. War Spite is 550. New Mexico is 640. The Fuso is at 740. So the Dunkirk's turn radius is a little bit less than a Fuso, and the Fuso is not renowned for her agility. So the thing about the Dunkirk is that she's not very agile. So here you go, you have this characteristic of a not-so-maneuverable battleship, but she has none of that armor that a battleship could use to survive with problems. Rudder shift time, stock, 14 seconds. It's okay, um, but again, you don't have a super-fast rudder shift, so you're going to have issues trying to dodge and weave, maybe like a cruiser will. It's almost like, while the Sharnhur sort of got the good aspects of battleships, the armor, along with the good aspects of cruisers, the fast-firing guns, and the decent agility, the Dunkirk seems to have gone the other direction, where she's gotten, like, the worst traits of cruisers, the cruddy armor, and then she's got the cruddy aspects of certain battleships, the shoddy dispersion, the not-so-good agility. So it's just, I don't know, the Dunkirk is just one of those ships. And then, of course, to make matters worse, your detectability range by sea is 16.4 kilometers. If you're on fire, which you will happen to be on fire quite a lot, you're going to be spotted from 18.4 kilometers. In short, you're going to be spotted a lot by probably sneaky destroyers somewhere, and it's going to become kind of annoying. And of course, if you get set on fire, good luck with that. If you look at the worst bite, 13.8 km detectability, New Mexico is 14.2, only bad ones Fuso at 18.9, but at least the Fuso still has fully fledged battleship armor and can at least bounce some shots. The Dunkirk, no such luck. To sum up the Dunkirk as a whole, not fun at all. So then let's take a look at her upgrade modules to see if there is anything that you can do to make her a little bit better. Well, Main Armaments Modification 1 is an absolute necessity. Your main guns get knocked out way too frequently if you don't have this. So that's the first thing that's absolute. You have to go for this. On the second one, uh, Aiming Systems Mod 1 is my suggestion. Really, because everything else is not very viable, and her guns dispersion, for God's sakes, needs some help. At least with this thing, 227 at 18.2, sometimes you'll see decent uh, dispersion. Third slot, Damacon, damage control is absolutely useful. Additional, a little bit additional torpedo damage reduction, which is good, and also not getting set on fire would be really, really nice. Remember, high detectability, meaning people are going to shoot you a lot. And then on the fourth slot, ooh, here it has some choices. You can go for Damacon 2, you can go for propulsion modification, you can go for steering gears. Um, I personally went with propulsion modification just so I could slow down and get away from things in reverse while keeping my guns on target at times. Um, also useful for trying to dodge some stuff. It's just, I don't know, any of these three is okay. It's your choice, really. But for me, I, I went with the propulsion mod. All right, so captain skills. 
In terms of captain skills, there was a little bit of an issue here. Is I, I only started with a three-point captain, so I had to actually level things. And that could skew my view. It could skew my view of the ship a little bit. But, 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 I have to, I have to really stress this. There are flaws with the ship that even with captain skills, it will not fix at all. This I can say with a high degree of certainty. So if you had to get skills, basics of survivability would be the first skill. Second skill, you can go for expert marksman. That could be pretty useful. On the third row, third row you have a lot of choices. You can go for high alert, you can go for vigilance, or you can go for superintendent. I went with superintendent because I really felt like I needed that extra heal just to keep myself around for a little bit longer. So I would say superintendent. Fourth row, bit of a no-brainer, get AFT. It'll boost your AA a little bit and hopefully allow you to defend yourself a little bit better. So definitely AFT. On the fifth row, I would say get Concealment Expert. Get Concealment Expert because you are way too easily detected. Just you need something to make yourself a little bit more stealthy. So Concealment Expert. And that's the first 15. Once you're past that, you can get you can save up three points and get high alert. You can also offer something like basic firing training and maybe get incoming fire alert. Um, so that is all up to you. One last thing before we go and take a look at some battles is that if you actually got Concealment Expert, uh, your surface actability will drop by 14% and your surface actability will become 14.1 kilometers, which is still not very good considering that if you ran into a war spy in New Mexico and they had Concealment Expert, they're even stealthier than you are. So, all right, let's take a look at how she performs in battle and my final thoughts after that. So into battle we go, and it's going to be the estuary map, and I am in a tier 8 battle, where I'm actually bottom tier. Somebody's going to look at that and go, well that's not a fair kind of video, you're putting yourself at the bottom at a massive disadvantage, of course you're not going to do very well. Well, that's not really why I decided to show this particular um, uh, replay. It's mostly because uh, at tier 6, and pretty much only at tier 6 and maybe tier 5, your ship is okay. It's okay as long as you don't meet war spites. As long as you don't, as long as you don't meet anything with guns larger than 356 millimeters, you're gonna be okay. Once you get into a different tier, so and and you will get into different tiers. Out of most of my Dunkirk battles, I think they've all been at higher tiers. So. There's only been a couple of tier 6, and yeah, in those battles I've done okay. But once you get into the higher tiers, you really start to have a problem with the Dunkirk. And the problem really is, what is really the role of the ship? Remember earlier I mentioned that while the Scharnhorst has sort of the best traits of battleships in terms of the armor and stuff, she also does keep some of the traits of cruisers, that rapid firing guns and everything. So that allows the Scharnhorst to at least do a pretty good job as a cruiser killer. The Dunkirk is, well, she's a bit of a strange one. Yes, she can go and do that cruiser hunting role. She can do that. But her rate of fire is not fantastic. And her dispersion tends to be erratic to the point where it's like you hit something and maybe you get a citadel. You could, you could aim at a broadside target and maybe you'll get citadels. Maybe you won't get anything. And it's this very, very frustrating feeling that it's like the targets that you are most suited to really dealing with, because of the way your guns are so erratic, you don't really fulfill that role well. Ships that are the same type as you, battleships, well, they tend to be quite dangerous if they're even a tier up on you, or at least they have larger guns than 356 millimeters, because then they start to uh, overmatch your armor. And then, of course, you also have the problem where it's like every time a battleship shells you, you're worried that your turrets are going to get knocked out. That is like a persistent worry when I play Dunkirk. Every single time I see an enemy salvo come in, I'm just sitting there going, please, 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 but my guns not get killed. Please, like my guns don't get hit. Because the ship just, it, it, it cannot fight battleships at all, it, it appears. If you get into a, a fight with a battleship, 
you're generally in trouble. So you have to like avoid battleships, but you're not consistent enough to kill cruisers. So it's almost like maybe your only viable targets are destroyers that you go shoot with HE, and that then you just start to play with fire because you're not really supposed to be engaging destroyers. So it's like my problem with the Dunkirk is that while the Sharnhorst role I can understand very, very well, and the Sharnhorst has the um, tools to make it work, the Dunkirk just doesn't. Her armor is too weak to engage battleships, her guns are too erratic for cruisers, she doesn't have torpedoes, her secondaries are not great, uh, her turrets are just fragile to, to an unbelievable level almost. And so, yeah, I mean, that's that's the struggle. So in this battle, I initially come over to this side because I saw the Aoba, and I'm like, okay, there's a cruiser there. Maybe I can fight it. I mean, I do okay against that destroyer, but it is a Tashkent. I did okay, but now there is a Colorado here, and that Colorado is a threat immediately. Like, if, this, if I was in New Mexico and I saw a Colorado, I'd be like, let's go. Or if I was in a Fuso and I saw a Colorado, I'd be like, let's go. Let's fight it out. No problems. But the Dunkirk, it's like, oh god, there's Colorado. It's got 406 millimeter guns. Better start running away from it. So the other trait, right? And this is the other, the one really good trait of the Dunkirk. Her speed. All right, at least I can shift over to another side of the map. I'm looking at the map. I'm seeing, okay, most of the battleships seem to be concentrated here on this side of the map. I'm going to go to the other side, and I'm going to go at least fight cruisers. Because, hey, at least against cruisers, even if my guns are totally erratic, I'm at least not going to die to them, right? So off I go to the other side. But again, even when you do this, had one of those battleships like the Amagi or the North Carolina, had they wanted to chase me, I wouldn't exactly have this massive lead on them. Enemy Cleveland pops up in the distance. Looks like he's just backing up a little bit. So, and the Cleveland is reasonably angled, so I'm going to take a longer range shot. See what I mean? The dispersion is a bit erratic. And while the war spite can have erratic dispersion, the war spite can also have amazing dispersion sometimes, right? And when the war spite hits, it hits hard. The Dunkirk, it's like, okay, your dispersion's erratic. If you hit, maybe. Maybe you do damage. Against the Hipper, line up a shot. The Hipper's pretty much broadside. There's a little bit of an angle there, but pretty much broadside. And you'll see that I'm actually going to hit a Citadel. That's it. I hit a Citadel and an Overpen. I do about 10,000 damage. I'm not even sure if that Hipper really felt it or not. I mean, yeah, I, I did manage to Citadel, but I don't even think the Hipper really felt anything. I mean, most cruiser captains, if you took a Citadel from, let's say, a Tier 6 battleship, you'd lost over 10,000 HP. There's that immediate almost thing you do to try to protect yourself. Hipper didn't really didn't really seem to mind that first citadel. Okay, so then I fire another salvo, four over pens this time. Okay, okay, nope, not even penetration this time. Fine, all right. So I only did three thousand damage there. And my frustration shows with the Dunkirk. I'm pretty sure in the review, my frustration is showing right now. And and I I tried, and I really really tried so hard to. To like the ship, I, I even held back on the review going, you know what, I, I can take it into battle again, let's give it another go, maybe I missed something on the first time, change the way I play her, change different things, and, and nothing, it's just, it was as bad today as it was the last time I actually played the ship. Against cruisers, yeah, your armor will hold, I mean, thank god for that at least, right, but when you get into battleships, it it feels like it doesn't matter. It's like if you have, if you run into a North Carolina or a Colorado or Nagato, it feels like you're. See, that's what I mean. This is exactly what I'm trying to get at. You hit, you hit a, a salvo, and sometimes, sometimes you'll hit a salvo like that, and you will see, yeah, a couple thousand damage. Sometimes you'll hit her, you'll see, oh, like okay, I got like 970, got one over pen worth of damage. Frustrating. <laughs> it's a very frustrating ship to play. So eventually, I look over here and I don't really see all that much. It seems like the cruisers aren't really over here. Destroyer, it's getting kind of hunted down, so not really much choice. Now I've got to start heading back and dealing with those battleships. So, time to turn around and 
go back. But first, ch make sure to check where all the enemy guns are pointed, because I really, really do not want to turn around and get shot at. Okay, I see the Colorado fire is something else. Fantastic. Great time to get the ship turned around. Speaking of turret fragility, I think in this battle I got mostly lucky. I didn't lose a single turret, and I, I didn't even really suffer any sort of turret uh, incapacitation or temporary incapacitation. But there's been other battles where I've lost one gun. There's even been one battle where I lost both guns. Then I just turned into a giant torpedo. <laughs> yeah, I mean, broadside Amagi, 1,900 damage. Real, really insignificant damage there. Ah, this is one of those things that you're just going to become very, very fed up. And okay, as soon as you see this, this is something that will scare the life out of you after you play the Dark Oak for a while. You see like a North Carolina firing at you, and you're scared. You're scared because you're going to take some sort of penetration damage. You're also really, really scared that it's going to knock out your guns. So immediately you see how I'm playing. I'm like, okay, I'm going to try to get out of the line of fire. I'm going to try to get behind an island, maybe poke my bow around the corner or something like that. I'm really scared of any ship with guns larger than 356 millimeters. Like anything bigger and it really just scares me because they will pen you, they will hurt you, and they will ruin your day. All right, so there we go. I got a salvo into the Colorado. Get a decent amount of damage there, so yay. I mean, sometimes you will still get reasonable damage. Citadels are near impossible on battleships uh, at range. Your guns don't seem to have the penetration or whatnot to actually go and citadel battleships. So that's something you're going to have to, if you do decide to get the ship, it's something you're going to have to get used to. But it's, yeah, it's disappointing. I, I just, I, I don't understand why Wargaming for this particular ship gave it so many flaws. I just do not understand that this ship had enough problems with the fact that her armor is completely terrible, that her secondaries are not very good, her A is not very good, her detectability is not good at all. Like, I don't understand why with all of these flaws, they still decided to make the guns the way they are. These guns are not good at all whatsoever. And this is actually kind of weird too. I once remember seeing, and this was a while back, I saw a Dunkirk back in battle a while ago, and its guns appeared to have pretty good dispersion then, so I don't know what's changed since that time, because at, at the time when I saw it in, in battle, I was like, oh man, I'm really hyped, because look, it's got this really solid dispersion. Now it just doesn't. There you go, hit against the North Carolina, 8,000 damage. And so, yeah, I mean, that's the state of the ship. And I really, like, I'm I'm hoping that from the time that this video comes out to the time this ship appears in store, that something changes. This salvo, like, salvos like that will scare the life out of you if you play Dunkirk, because those are the salvos that will knock out your guns. And so, <laughs> there are those kinds of things that you, after playing the ship for a while, you immediately become afraid of. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really hoping that something from now until the release, something changes, they give her guns a buff. Because if they don't, and the ship stays exactly the way as she is right now, and this ship comes out for release, I, I do not, I do not recommend buying the ship at all. It's not worth it whatsoever. All right, here we go. Watch this. Broadside Amagi. Salvo. Looks decent. 2,900 damage. Uh, okay. All right. Sure. I mean, the Samagi is broadside to me at like 11 kilometers. It should have been more consistent, right? No. No. Okay. All right. Let's 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 try again. Let's try again. North Carolina angled. No chance at all. There's just no chance you're going to be able to get that shot off. That's fine. All right. So, Amagi, fire. And hoping, hoping for the best here, and oh, okay, 6,000 damage this time. The guns are very, very inconsistent. Actually, to sort of bring up something, there was one battle earlier today um, where I was in battle with the Dunkirk. I had a Nuremberg attempt to angle by presenting bow in. I shot a Nuremberg, and the shells bounced 
on Nuremberg. Three shells that actually hit the Nuremberg all bounced. The Nuremberg, in surprise, in chat went, did you actually bounce shells off my Nuremberg? And I'm like, yeah. Twiddle thumb, twiddle thumb, twiddle thumb. It was just, it was just that kind of frustration that when you play the ship, you will experience. All right. So I managed to kill the very, very low HP North Carolina. So now I turn my attention back to the Amagi. Amagi is going to go full broadside now. This Amagi captain wasn't very good, mind you. I'm going full broadside. So this should be, and I'm closing the range. I'm, I'm trying to get as close as possible. 8.8 .8 kilometers. All right, Amagi starts to angle a little bit. 6,000 damage. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, Dunkirk, I wanted to love you so much, but you just, you, you broke my heart, girl. <laughs> oh. All right, so Amagi now even closer, seven kilometers. He's angled in a little bit. Like another random-ish salvo. There we go, finally score my second Citadel onto that battleship. And that pretty much does it for this battle. We're going to cap out and get the win. So, final thoughts. Don't buy her. She's not a very good ship. Save your money for something better. Anyways, folks, hope you enjoyed this review. Take care, have a good one, and I'll talk to all of you again soon.